good morning students in our today's sst class we will be doing geography lesson number 4 major domains of the earth in this chapter we will be studying about the four domains of the earth that is the lithosphere hydrosphere atmosphere and biosphere now if i talk about lithosphere lithosphere means stone hydrosphere means water atmosphere means air and biosphere means life now our earth is a unique planet in the whole universe in the whole solar system it is the only planet which is in uh, habitable and which supports life though sometime it is supposed that conditions of the mars other planets in the solar system are also favorable to support some life forms yet there is no evidence that life sustain on these other planets so basically we can say that life sustains only on earth land water and air are the major domains of the earth which sustain life now as i said earlier the land mass or the solid crust of the rocks is called lithosphere the vast water masses which includes oceans sea is called the hydrosphere the domain of air that surrounds the earth is called the atmosphere then there is another domain which is called biosphere or the domain of life the four realms are not separate they are intermingled now if i talk about the four domains of life now children there are there is a point where all these four domains meet three domains meet together and they form the fourth one that is the biosphere for example suppose this is a circle this is another circle now the third circle comes that is this one here okay now this part here now this part here is a place where all the domains are meeting where all the domains are meeting now this part is known as your biosphere where life exist here at this part you have your land you have air you have water so that is what is where life is possible because at this place all the other three domains meet together if i say ki air and water meet together so life is not possible because basically life for life you need air water land all the three other domains so the place where the other three domains meet that is your biosphere and that is where life exist now we will study about all these domains in detail first one lithos sphere litho means stone and as such lithosphere means the solid crust of the earth it includes all types of landforms big small even or uneven high mountains low lands deep valleys vast plains plateaus everything high lands heights of these land masses are measured from the sea level all the oceans of the world are connected with one another hence the level of the water remains same everywhere it is with the help of the sea that we can even measure the height of the highest peak that is 8848 meters of the world and its deepest trench that is the marina trench 11022 that is the deepest trench which is in the pacific ocean now about 71% of the earth surface is under oceans and seas now if you look at the map which is given on your page number 128 figure number 20.1 in this you will find that the northern hemisphere has more of land mass and less water bodies while the southern hemisphere has water masses is much bigger than the land masses major land masses are called continents while smaller land masses are called islands they are surrounded by water on 
all sides i hope you all know what are northern hemisphere and southern hemisphere you have been taught earlier that the equator divides the earth into two equal half that is the upper part is the northern hemisphere and the lower part is the southern hemisphere now let us study about the continents the lands there are seven continents first is your asia asia is the largest continent on the earth and it occupies about one third of the earth on the world there are now more than 46 countries in asia our country is one of them in asia and europe together belong to the same land mass they are not separated by a large water mass ural mountains and the ural river separate europe and asia together they are called eurasia you must have studied this in your previous class also in fifth standard the swiss now about africa africa is next to asia in size the swiss canal separates it from asia it is the only continent of the world which has the tropic of cancer the equator and the tropic of capricorn passing through it so it has three major tropics passing through it now north america north america is the third largest continent of the world after asia and africa it is about eight times the size of india it was columbus who discovered this continent in 1492 ad now south america it is the fourth largest continent of the world after asia africa north america it is more than five times the size of india now next is australia australia is the smallest continent on the earth it is sometimes called an island continent it is surrounded on all sides by sea and oceans now antarctica it is a big continent it lies around the south pole it is always covered with snow and ice as such there is no permanent human settlements here it was the first discovered in 1921 many countries of the world are continuously sending expeditions to antarctica to gain more knowledge about this new discovery now by looking at the globe we find that three continents asia europe north america entirely lie in the northern hemisphere two countries australia and antarctica entirely lie in the southern hemisphere that is the lower part africa and southern america lie in both the hemispheres and the equator passes through them now we have finished with the first domain that is lithosphere now the second domain that is hydrosphere that is water all the water bodies of the earth surface namely ocean sea lakes rivers together with snow and ice are collectively called hydrosphere all of the planets it is only the earth which has hydrosphere that is why the earth is known as the waterly planet because it is only it is the only planet of the solar system which contains a huge quantity of water now about 97% of the total water on the globe is found in the ocean and the rest 3% consists of water of the lakes rivers and the water obtained from the snow and ice now oceans oceans are large water bodies separated by continents the pacific the atlantic the indian ocean the southern ocean and the arctic ocean the water bodies which surround the continent of antarctica is only the extension of the pacific atlantic and indian ocean basically we think that it is a new ocean but it is not like that it is just the extension of the other three oceans now pacific ocean is the greatest uh, than the area of the other continents put to together it is not only the largest but also the deepest ocean marina trench which is the deepest point lies in this ocean 
and if i talk about atlantic ocean it is the busiest ocean in the world as all the important seaports are basically in this near ocean near this ocean the main harbor points are also on the coastline of this ocean and the indian ocean is the only ocean which is named after an country now the importance of oceans if we talk about the importance of ocean the oceans have their own importance in many ways basically firstly the presence of large quantities of water in ocean is responsible for moderating the temperature moderating means controlling the ocean's current often keep the hot countries quite cool and cool countries quite warm they influence the influence of these ocean currents on the climate is basically affecting the countries the tides keep the sea shores quite clean they come the, the tides they come and they wipe away all the dirt so the basically the shore is clean oceans provide abundant water vapor to the atmosphere which results in rains on the plains ocean help in maritime activities and promote tree trade uh, maritime activities means uh, your naval and other sea activities oceans provide an abundant source of food for mankind because the seafood is very popular among people those who live in the coastal areas now water of oceans the water of the oceans are never still they are always moving for one reason or the other there are different kinds of movement of the these are waves tides and currents the rising and falling of the surface water caused by pushing actions of the wind is called wave the regular and alternate rise and fall of water twice a day caused by the gravitational pull of the moon and the sun is called the tides by streams of water flowing regularly constantly and in different directions on the surface of the oceans are called ocean currents beside the ocean current oh, sorry beside the oceans there are smaller water bodies also such as bay sea and gulfs oceans are vast expanse of salt water covering the greater part of the surface of the earth sea are also quite vast but they are smaller in size as compared to oceans and are almost surrounded by land a gulf is hollow carved out of a sea coast which lets the water reach deep island while a bay is an inlet of the sea with a wide opening than a gulf arabian sea bay of bengal and the persian gulf you must have heard about all these names now we have finished with the two domains now we'll start with the third domain that is atmosphere that is air a column of air surrounds the earth up to the height of 1600 kilometers about the earth surface it is called atmosphere air is a thick air is thicker near the surface of the earth while the upper layers are thinner in other words the density of the atmosphere is highest at the sea level and it goes on decreasing while going upwards beyond 1600 kilometers there is airless outer space the air is a mixture of gases which usually maintain a constant proportion a sample of air near the earth contains 78% nitrogen 21% oxygen and 1% other gases as carbon dioxide and water vapor etc of these oxygen is an important gas it is called the breath of life because it is very necessary for breathing as we go up the quantity of oxygen goes on decreasing that is why the mountaineers carry oxygen cylinders on their backs while climbing high peaks the astronauts also carry oxygen cylinders for the same reason oxygen also helps in the burning activity nitrogen is almost sorry nitrogen is also an important 
as it is the main part of proteins which help in the growth of living organism carbon dioxide and water are also important for us as they help plants to grow and make food in the presence of sunlight like any other batter air also has weight and it exerts pressure on the earth's surface it is called atmospheric pressure the pressure of the air is not the same at all places equatorial regions of high temperature are the regions of low pressure where the temperature has high the air pressure is low while the polar regions of low temperature are the regions of high pressure this variation in the pressure of air causes the air to move from high pressure areas to the low pressure areas and thus this moving air is called wind now importance of atmosphere the atmosphere is also very important to us the atmosphere acts like a blanket or a glass house for the earth it receives the radiations of the sun but does not allow all the insulations to go outside as such it keeps the earth warm it protects us from the harmful solar radiation the water vapor and carbon dioxide present in the lower layers of the atmosphere absorb the heat radiated by the earth surface and as such keeps the atmosphere warm even during night had there been no atmosphere the extreme of temperature between the day and night would have been much greater the sun's rays heat the atmosphere differently and they create circulation in the atmosphere which leads to winds and rain the atmosphere controls the extremes of the season the different trees and plants adapt themselves easily to the changing season and survive continuously now with this we have finished the three domains now the fourth domain that is the biosphere where all these three domains meet biosphere life exists only in a narrow zone where land water and air come in contact as i told you earlier the part where the three domains meet that is the biosphere life exists only in this domain it is because of this narrow zone called biosphere that our earth is regarded as a unique in the whole universe this zone supports several varieties of organisms both plants and animals some of them are so minute that they can be viewed only with the help of microscope while others are quite big and huge you all know you have studied in science also there are living organisms which are very small which cannot be seen with our naked eyes also they need to be seen only with the help of microscope so all these organism living organisms are supported on only on this domain life under the surface of the earth while others live deep under water and still others roam around on the earth or on the or in the air now harmful effects that disturb the balance of the biosphere now because we live in this biosphere if there is a disturbance in this at in this domain then it is also going to affect our life now how this affects our life we are going to study in this it is the ideal state of the biosphere that support all kinds of life any disturbance in the ideal state may cause havoc to all kinds of life because each one supports the other living organisms are broadly broadly divided into plant kingdom and animal kingdom they maintain a balance under ideal conditions of natural existence but if this balance is disturbed due to our negligence it may cause much havoc for existence for instance in recent years human population has increased so fast that this balance of coexistence has come under severe threat to feed the growing population to meet their needs natural resources are being exploited 
rest recklessly forest are clean cleared to convert them into fields or towns trees are cut down and minerals are dug out more and more factories are set up increase of silt in rivers is taking place this leads to flooding more and more vehicles run on the roads even the latest advance in science and technology has done little to contain the harmful effects of this expansion factory dumps and discharges are continuously polluting our water bodies and air which even nature cannot prevent so as i told you like the disturbance in the any of these domains will cause a disturbance in our life if we cause damage to the earth to the water bodies to the air anything we pollute it is going to affect our life all these factors mainly disturb and damage the biosphere so it is not checked in time then all kinds of organism from tiny to the bacteria to the large may be suffering and a time will come when maybe uh, there may be no existence of life also so we need to take care of all these things now major landforms of the earth as we have finished with all the domains now we will study about the major landforms how many types of landforms are there basically we have mountains plateaus and plains three types of landforms mountain is a high landmass with sharply sloping surface it is considerably higher than the surrounding areas when the surrounding area rises that forms the mountain this usually occur in chains or in ranges extending over hundreds of kilometers now mountains differ in shapes and heights young mountains like himalayas are very high and have pointed peaks old mountains like the aravalli and the alpalachian are low in height and have rounded tops there are three types of mountains fold mountains block mountains and volcanic mountains if i talk about fold mountains they are created due to the internal movements in the earth as a result of the cooling and contracting of the molten magma in the crust at several places become eroded and folds are made the elevated parts become mountains that is fold mountains there is actually a pro, uh, contraction means sikodna jise aap bolte okay to cooling thanda hone se wo andar ka jo magma hai wo sikodne lagta hai usse landforms ke shape mein variations aate hain to usse jo mountain bante hain that is called your fold mountains now if i talk about block mountains block mountains are created when large masses of land are broken and displaced vertically now if i talk about this block mountains so let me tell you that when this uh, mountains suppose this is your land form now this land form when it breaks vertically vertically means niche aise to isme yahan to deep valley this is a deep valley in the center and this side and this side your mountains are formed so this is your block mountains now volcanic mountains are formed due to volcanic activities i don't have to tell what are volcanoes so when volcanic activities are there volcanoes volcanic mountains are formed mount kilimanjaro in africa and mount fuji fujiyama in japan are some examples of volcanic mountains life in mountains regions because of hard and rocky terrains is very hard it is difficult to construct roads and railways on the mountain so life on the mountains is very difficult that is why these uh, areas are very thinly populated thinly populated means kam log rehte hain wahan par now let's talk about plateau plateau is a broad uh, and more or level land stretch upland that rises sharply above neighboring lowlands it is also called a table land jo aas paas ki land hoti hai usse thodi uthi hui hoti hai like a table so it is called a table land 
the surface of the plateau is not always smooth it is generally rugged and rocky means rough hota hai patrila hota hai now like the mountain regions life in the plateau regions is also very hard land is not smooth so it hinders the laying of roads and railways and canals now let's talk about plains a relatively flat and low lying vast expanse of land is called a plain while some plains are extremely level others may be rolling and undulating most of these plains are formed by major rivers and the tributaries which have been bringing by the deposits the silt the rivers which bring the deposits with that these plains are formed now these plains are formed because of the silt deposits by the rivers so they are very fertile and that is why these plains are very thickly populated most of the population of the world live in these plains now with this we have finished the chapter and i will be sending you the question answers